Good evening, my friends, and welcome to this session on Ignatian spirituality offered by the Jesuits at St. Peter's Parish, Bandra, the Jesuit community. Uh, I thought we could start with a hymn, and the hymn is a common hymn. Uh, it's called Give Them All to Jesus, number 107, if you have books with you. I think these, the words of, these, of this hymn set a good, uh, a good background to what we are going to be talking about today, and that is spiritual discernment, Ignatian discernment. We are, being, we are singing here of being tired of chasing our rainbows. Pretty rainbows they might be, but we are tired of them. We are tired of spinning round and round. Our dreams often are shattered. And so, let's come and lay them at the feet of Jesus. That's what discernment is about. Give them all to Jesus. All your shattered dreams, our wounded hearts, our broken toys, give them all to Jesus and he'll transform them. He'll make them into something beautiful for us and for the world and for the building up of his kingdom. So let's sing, sing this as a prelude to our session on discernment. Are you tired of chasing pretty rainbows? Are you tired of spinning round and round? Wrap up all the shattered dreams of your life and at the feet of Jesus lay them down. Give them all, give them all give them all to Jesus shattered dreams wounded hearts broken toys give them all give them all give them all to Jesus and he will turn your sorrows into joy my friends These sessions on Ignatian spirituality have been suggested to us by one of our PPC members, the parish council members, Mr. Damien Nerona, and I'd like to acknowledge his contribution to us coming up with this series of five talks. And when he suggested this, uh, this series, we thought that we do have some resources in the Jesuit community. You already heard yesterday that Father Tony de Souza was the novice master of our province for several years and he initiated many of our younger Jesuits into Ignatian spirituality and into the Society of Jesus, including our next speaker tomorrow. Father Thompson. Father Gerard is a very well experienced pastor and he had the privilege of actually staying in the cave of Ignatius at Manresa in Spain. And he prayed there and he has got that heritage, that inspiration from the very place where Ignatius of Loyola had his spiritual experiences. And so it's clear that we have some valuable resources with us. And that is why we ventured on this experience. My friends, the topic that I take up today is the topic of Ignatian discernment. We have already had the setting very well laid out for us. For example, Father Tony told us about how crucial it is to be detached. Detached from both alternatives, from anything that happens. Anything that happens, we should be ready to say, yes, Lord, if it is your will, fine. A spirit of indifference, 
not a spirit of saying I don't mind what happens it doesn't matter to me it matters why because whatever God wants that's what my will is and therefore I'm at a, a, a point of equilibrium I'm ready for anything Father Tony explained that very well I think Father Gerard made several points yesterday one of which is how devious the evil spirit is he gave us that experience uh, that example of the Onida ad and he says only the tail sometimes is visible and that's precisely something we have to recognize and Ignatius has an antidote to that and the antidote for true discernment is spiritual direction having someone whom you can bounce your feelings and thoughts off and that person can see through sometimes the blind spots that we have and therefore Ignatius gave a lot of importance in discernment to sharing with someone else to having a spiritual director now this does not necessarily mean to be someone you know very high up in spirituality every one of us is impelled by the spirit you can have a spiritual director who's your companion for many years I had a lay person as my spiritual director and she gave me very good feedback of what's happening within my mind and heart on many occasions and so my friends spiritual direction means that you are being humble you are revealing yourself to someone else you are being open to receiving something from another human being but impelled by the spirit this openness and humility is very important for Ignatian discernment and so you see we have already heard about Ignatian discernment in the talks that have just passed now my friends today's first reading gives us first reading in the God in the in the mass tells us about an uh, happening in the Acts of the Apostles and Philip is told by an angel it seems to go on to a certain road and then he met an Ethiopian and we know all that happened got into the chariot explained the scripture but I'd like to point out that many times in scripture we have this an angel speaking the Holy Spirit inspiring or God saying something to someone we have that in the Old Testament already but very much in the New Testament now is that happening today in our lives or has God aban abandoned us that was only for the early times well uh, Ignatius says no the spirit is alive and active today prompting us giving us messages from God helping us to understand where God wants us to move and therefore my friends we need to seek the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of discernment discernment is really a gift it's a charism we read about this in the New Testament a charism is a gift which is given to someone for the use of the community and of the nine charisms the discernment of spirits is one and we can pray for these gifts of the spirit the charisms of the spirit many years ago my friends when I was in college I encountered the charismatic renewal at St. Xavier's College in fact they had the first meeting of the charismatic renewals in Mumbai there in our seminar room and I joined that group because I was searching and then after a lot of preparation etc the group said we all have to see what is God prompting us to ask for what gift so many gifts there are the gift of healing the gift of wisdom the gift of tongues and interpretation I thought God was saying ask for the gift of discernment 
And from those days, early days, in my last year of college, I have been continuously praying for the gift of discernment because I think it is prompted by God's Spirit. And being an administrator for so many years in an educational institution where a lot of decision-making had to be taken, what does God want of us? It was an important gift that I sought and that I relied upon. And therefore, my friends, all of us can pray for this gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit of discernment and the fruits of the Spirit which go along with these gifts, the fruits of love, joy, peace. Those are gifts and those are states of mind and heart which help us to discern God's will. So my friends, I would uh, encourage you to pray for the gift of discernment. Maybe it's not uh, the overriding gift that God wants to give you. Maybe you have already received the gift of healing or whatever, praying for people for healing. But the gift of discernment is so crucial in our lives. Ignatian, do we need today uh, this discernment because Ignatius says it's not only a gift that is given Ignatius Ignatian uh, discernment is a discernment which is a set of rules and practices they can be tried out and if tried out they give us a very good way of finding out what does God want from us in everyday practical situations in fact, this discernment through this practice of the rules of discernment of Ignatius can become a way of life. In fact, Ignatius tells us it leads us to being able to find God in all things. Everything that happens, all the events, every person we meet, God is saying something to us. And this practice of discernment helps us to reach that level becomes really a way of life and therefore we have to ask ourselves do we need the gift of discernment today do we need it i would think we need it more than ever because there are so many issues in our world that we really do are clueless about Take, for example, just this pandemic that has hit us. None of us know what's happening. We don't know what's going to happen after this lockdown has been lifted or even after the virus has got contained. We don't know whether our way of life will change. It, in fact, many say it's God speaking to us. It's nature telling us something. And if we don't listen, then something worse might even happen. Literally something worse because the way human beings are going, you and I, is not God's way. Very clear. Just the destruction of this wonderful planet of ours gives us the clue that we have gone horribly wrong. My friends, justice issues are issues where we need the Spirit of God to help us to understand what does God want. We often talk of a laity-centered church from a clergy-driven church. But what does that mean? What are the practical steps we need to take to make it a clergy-centered church? After all, the clergy, lay people in the world, they are the church. And so how do we give that importance, overriding importance? It's something that we need discernment for. And so, my friends, there are so many areas of our lives where discernment is so crucial, more than ever. And so, let's review how we make our decisions, how we decide on which way we will go. What are the choices we make? That's something that is important to take seriously. I would uh, like to enumerate some of the responses that we have, the ways we make decisions. One is 
a spontaneous impulsive reaction to something that happens sometimes that is required because it's so spontaneous there's no time to think and to discern etc a spontaneous reaction that can be helped if we get into the practice of discernment in at other times but it will have to be spontaneous as a reaction and impulse we often go also according to our feelings of the moment don't we if we are happy we take one decision if we are discouraged or depressed we would take another decision emotions are so influential they influence the way we do things the choices we make the feelings of the moment we also some of us and or maybe all of us at some times of our lives or the other we take recourse to prayers and devotions hoping that that will help us to overcome the difficulty that we are faced with prayers and devotions novenas etc chaplets i know one of uh, a friend of mine said you know all the problems that i have i place in the heart of jesus and then i don't i don't bother i go ahead no matter what anybody else says i have placed everything in the heart of jesus well really what that means i don't know but it does not uh, go well with what discernment is all about often we would also take recourse to management principles and those may be good for very practical uh, uh practical decisions that we need to make but our management principles the way to find out what god wants us to do not likely and so my friends we need to take discernment seriously in our lives and perhaps we have not done it too much and therefore i'd like to talk about ignatian discernment an ignatian discernment is the discernment of spirits the discernment of spirits ignatius tells us there are three spirits we have to decipher from three spirits one is the human spirit the inclinations we have the temperament the hurts of the past that influence us the ideas that come to us that's the human spirit there is also the diabolical spirit ignatius says the evil spirit the devil is also active and we know that from scripture there is a spirit of evil which is also active in our world and in our lives and then of course the holy spirit the divine spirit the spirit of jesus now how do we make out which spirit is influencing us is directing us at a particular moment that's where the genius of ignatius comes in because he says god taught him like a schoolmaster teaches a student he went through experiences and reflecting on those experiences he learned how to discern what god wants of him and so my friends this is what ignatius says needs to be done to have a true discernment of spirits first of all we have already talked about detachment detachment because we have just seen emotions can be very disruptive the mood we may be in may influence the decision and so ignatius says the precondition is detachment and indifference praying to god to bring you to that evil keel where neither uh, alternative makes a difference to you you are ready for both you might want one but you are ready also for the other for what reason and that was given in the three talks that we have just had because it is to the glory of god that's the overriding reason why we would want 
any particular decision to be made. That's the goal, to bring God glory. That's why we are here as human beings, to glorify God by the way we live our lives. And so, the precondition of detachment and emotional equilibrium is very important. We also heard yesterday that when we enter into the process of discernment, we should state our desire. What do we want from God? Depending on the situation that we are faced with, we have to state the desire and that desire once again is God's will. It's what will bring God most glory. We have to state that desire. And then we also have from Ignatius the colloquy, praying to Mary to intercede with her son, praying to Jesus to intercede with the Father, and then praying to our loving Father directly. These are intercessory prayers, these are dialogues with Mary, Jesus, and with God our Father, which set a good prelude, a good setting for us to enter into discernment. Now, my friends, Ignatius tells us next to go into something very simple, and that is weigh or list the pros and cons of both alternatives. What are the pros and cons of one alternative that you have? What are the pros and cons of another alternative? List them out, reflect on them, use your reason to weigh them, which seems stronger, which of these alternatives is more reasonable. That's what Ignatius recommends us uh, to do. But that's not sufficient. Which alternative is God calling me to? Those reasons are very head-level reasons. Those are the intellect. But that is not sufficient. Ignatius says, then once you have weighed the reasons in a reasonable manner, then take it to prayer. Prayer about the different alternatives, offering the alternatives to God. And that is where God acts not just on our ideas, our intellect, but God primarily acts, of all things, through our emotions. God acts on our feelings, our emotions, and Ignatian discernment heavily relies on trying to sift the different feelings that we have. And so quickly I'd like to go through some of the rules that he gives, because he says, our feelings often are at the superficial level. So that, of course, is not something you can rely on. But there are deeper, more long-lasting feelings of peace or disturbance, which will give you the clue. Already, from the time I was in school, I was thinking of what I will be in the future. And do you know what my desire was? To become a doctor. Of all things, a doctor, I thought doctors do a good job of service. So I wanted to become a doctor. But by the time I reached college, I realized that I don't have the capacities, the inclination to the type of subjects that a doctor requires to learn and to delve into. So I gave up that. But already from school, the idea of becoming a priest already had struck me. And in college, there are many other alternatives opened up for me. And towards the end of my college career, at the same time when I joined that charismatic group I spoke about, I had these alternatives. What does God want of me? What do I want for myself? And I began to tussle with different alternatives, think about them. And when I thought of the alternatives, of making a career, building a family, etc. I was quite happy. But deep down I knew that something was missing, some slight restlessness. Whereas when I thought about that call that I had in school, becoming a priest, 
had a much deeper sense of peace and joy within. And working on these feelings, I finally decided with spiritual direction to join the Jesuits. And here I am. I think it was a, sp a process of discernment in which God acted on my feelings. I had many talents and I could have been successful in many different areas. But God acted on my feelings and directed me to join this way of life, that of the Jesuits and the priestly life. And I'm grateful to God for that. The point I'm making is that it is the emotions, the feelings deep down within which we can come in touch with, which will give, give us good discernment. Now quickly some of the rules to try to sift through these feelings that come. One rule is that in the case, Ignatius says, of those going from one sin to the other, that means people not really uh, interested in the spiritual life. There the enemy, the devil, proposes apparent pleasures, fills the imagination with all sorts of sensual pleasures. Whereas the good spirit arouses the conscience, the opposite. Now, in those striving for spiritual growth, Ignatius is very clear, the evil spirit harasses with anxiety, sadness, discouragement, fallacious reasoning that disturbs one and the good spirit gives courage, strength, peace. So Ignatius says, sift through your deeper feelings. See what's happening within you. And if you are one who is looking to progress in the spiritual life, realize that the good spirit will give you courage, whereas the evil spirit will do the opposite. Secondly, in times of desolation and restlessness, in disturbance, temptation, Ignatius is very clear one should never make a change or a decision. And that's unfortunately something that we are very much prone to. But he makes it clear in desolation, it is the evil spirit that guides and influences us. And so in, de in desolation, remember that you should never make a decision, especially a crucial decision, but remain constant. And remember that God continues to give sufficient grace. God will continue to support you. He gives you enough of grace, although you might not feel it at the surface level. The next rule, he says, that the reasons for this desolation, feeling of discouragement, etc., could be threefold. And that is also important for us to reflect on. One could be our own fault. We have become tepid we have gone astray, we have been attracted by the world, and so you feel a sense of desolation, a sense of discouragement, of confusion, etc. This could be one reason for desolation. Another reason would be God is using desolation as a test, to test whether you really would be a rely on Him and His grace, not on your own strength. And finally, the third reason Ignatius says is to understand that it is not within our power to attain consolation. We can't work it up. We can't earn it. It is a free gift of God and he keeps it in abeyance. And we know that so many of the saints, John of the Cross, etc., have talked of the long, dark night of the soul. Even Mother Teresa has spoken of the last few years of her life when she felt God was not really present with her, but they all kept constant. And so desolation is not necessarily something bad. It's God communicating with us, God testing us and making us stronger. It is also characteristic of God to give true happiness and spiritual joy. That's consolation. 
but only God can give consolation without any previous cause. All of us feel happy because something good has happened, something nice, some success, some good event, and we feel happy because of that. That has a preceding cause. But Ignatius tells us that only God can give true happiness and spiritual joy without any preceding cause. It is, if a cause precedes, it could be either from the good or the evil spirit. The evil spirit sometimes appears as an angel of light. And we must observe the whole course of our thoughts. The beginning, the middle and the end. Because the devil, the evil spirit often starts with something good. Provokes in us devotion, etc. But slowly takes us, takes us away from God. That's the deviousness of the spirit. Ignatius warns us against that. And finally, Ignatius says, in souls progressing to perfection, the act of the good spirit is soft, is gentle, is delightful. It's like a drop of water falling on a sponge. It doesn't make a big noise or a splash. Whereas the evil spirit is violent, is disturbing to someone who's progressing in the spiritual life. It's like water falling on a stone and splashing. In a person going from bad to worse, the opposite happens. The good spirit comes in a strong manner, whereas the evil spirit slowly, very gently takes you along the wrong path because we are already in consonance with his desires. If we are in consonance with God's desires, then we have the gentle leading of the spirit. If we are in consonance with the evil spirit, then we have the gentle leading of the evil spirit. And this is something we need to uh, reflect on and ask for the grace to decipher. And finally, my friends, one must consider consolation attentively because in the fervor that follows, a person may make resolutions which can come either from oneself or from the bad spirit, the evil spirit or from the good spirit. And therefore, once again, we are gone back to that indifference, that equanimity that uh, we need to plead for and strive for to come to good discernment. So you can see, my friends, that God is really leading us not only through our intellect that's there, but primarily Ignatius tells us through our feelings. And if we get in touch with the deeper feelings within us, that's where we find what God wants from us. It's always something that is beautiful, wonderful, not necessarily for ourselves, but for Him. It is the majis, it is the seeking the more to give God glory. And that can be also bringing us the opposite. It could bring us humiliation, it could bring us conflict, it could bring us suffering. But through that, God wants to bring something good into the world. And it is through our deeper feelings, practicing the rules of discernment, listening to what the Spirit is saying to us through our feelings that God leads us on. My friends, you know, at, uh, at uh, the f one of the first discourses Pope Francis gave to the Jesuits, once he became Pope, he gave a type of a speech to the Jesuits. And you know what he told the Jesuits? He told us, seek for God's consolation. Pray for it. Seek it. Perhaps, you know, the Society of Jesus, he realized, had become very professional, is relying on earthly means, on earthly ways of finding out how to move forward. And that's not good, because that's not what God's will is. And so he said, 
don't just seek for you know god's will seek for god's consolation and that's what i would encourage all of us to do that's what ignatian discernment is about and from that discourse of pope francis and also at that time was our general congregation we have begun what we call spiritual conversations with one another trying to understand what is god saying to us in our inner being all of us are called to discernment so i'd like to uh, pray that each one of us here listening to this discourse may really find god in the feelings within us in the spirits moving within us that we make this a practice that we also ask for the charism of discernment but that we keep god's greater glory the majis at heart may that direct all that we do i'd like to end this session my friends with a song and i'm sure you'll realize the song is the prayer of saint ignatius himself some of you will know this although the prayer all of you will be familiar with the prayer is take and receive but this is a, the song composed by john foley a jesuit in america and he has titled it take lord receive I'd like to sing it and for those of you who know it very simple words please join in let's make it a prayer for all of us together that god's spirit may move powerfully within and through us take lord receive all my liberty my memory understanding my entire Give me only your love and your grace that's enough for me your love and your grace are enough for me take lord receive all i have and possess you have given all to me now i return it give me only your love and your grace that's enough for me your love and your grace are enough for me take lord receive all is yours now dispose of it wholly according to your will give me only your love and your grace that's enough for me your love and your grace are enough for me in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen